Hello everyone and welcome back to Nexus Commentaries. Tonight we're going to have uh, Soak Every Lane versus Spooky Ghost. We have a member of Spooky Ghost running a little bit late so they're going to draft with a sub and then they'll remake when the player gets here shortly. So we're going to do that. So, But first of all, uh, Spooky Ghost won the coin flip. Also joining me tonight is Wipeout. Hey! Alright, so Spooky Ghost won the coin flip. They opted for first map pick, or first draft pick on the first map. So, um, then Soak Every Lane banned out Tomb of the Spire Queen and Infernal Shrines, and then Spooky Ghost banned out D-Shire and BOE, and we are going to Ultrack for our first one. What do you think about that? Well, I want to know why they're banning Tomb of the Spider Queen every single time. What's the hate on for tombs? I don't like the map. Yeah, some people just don't like how brawly it is. Less chances to out macro your opponent. More, yeah, fair you gotta just box them a lot. Um, There's a team I know that tends to like macro maps. <laughs> Hello, Mega Muffin. Yes. Um. <laughs> Watch out for Don't Mega. Do not encourage Mega. Uh. Mega always has top tier comments. All right, so they're going to do a stand in for draft here, so we're going to go into that. So, Alterac pass though. Um, what kind of things do you look for when you're drafting an Alterac? Well, since it is a um, a map that rewards good macro, there are always heroes that are good at taking camps. Wave clear is important, and heroes that are good at stalling the objective. So, uh, a Junkrat's always good. Uh, Chromie might be good at stalling, but then again, um, a Grey Main is fantastic at taking a camp and pushing with it. All right, apparently we're going to stall the draft a little bit longer. Um, the guy is here, and he used the wrong form of here. <laughs> he acknowledged he couldn't spell at least, so that happened. Um, yes, yeah, so people who stole the objective of Junkrat... Chromie, I believe you said hammer can do it as well, but we don't we don't talk about that hero. <laughs> uh, other people are, that are good are globals because uh, the map may not look that large, but it's deceptively large because the mud slows actually increase the map size a little bit, effectively, give or take approximately. Um, so uh, Abathur is good, Dahaka is good, False is good, Brightwing can do a little bit, but Brightwing is not a real hero. <laughs> Actually, uh, Deathwing also is a thing. It's a global these days. Yeah, but Deathwing has not been doing well in DivB, has it? Uh, here and there. I've seen it. It's interesting that some of the higher league are in heroic. Deathwing is either first pick or first ban, but uh, with some of the lower, like DivB, um, I haven't seen them. We don't see anyone put real big priority uh there's maybe team training wheels and i've seen roll one put some priority on deathwing but no yeah. one else is really taking him well not we but we played it once once in a match we've done it more outside <laughs> um all right so first ban gonna be performed by spooky ghost and i imagine it will be a tank because that's her thing. Or Deathwing Ariel. About all that gets banned these days. Yeah, so it, it's interesting. Um, so Every Lane is actually playing with a sub. Their usual tank isn't around. Um, so Philip's probably going to be the tank. And he's a really strong tank from previous seasons. I don't think you can actually ban him out. So I would focus on other things that you don't really want to play into. And the first ban is... Bala. Huh. <laughs> Um, yeah, huh? Yeah, well, they banned BOE, so I guess they just felt like they had a draft for it anyways. I don't know. Um, it may be that they... Let's check. So every lane played Vala five times, 80% win rate. Don't know what yeah, maps, well, but they've been sense. playing it. It's going to be a target ban. It does it make will... sense. And a good Vala does actually... Um, good Vala can carry. Uh, Gul'dan banned out also makes sense, because Vigos has been playing Gul'dan. Quite a bit, especially towards the later half of the season. They've been playing it eight times. 
Yeah, and I, I like that uh, uh, spooky ghosts aren't banning out the Deathwing or the Oriole because that gives them the option to first pick it, and now Soak Every Lane has to kind of like live with the decision of letting it through, or potentially ban the Medivh, which is the number one priority against Spooky Ghost, in my opinion. Spooky Ghost has banned Deathwing. Yeah, there's like two teams in Division B you have to ban. There's the Ariel ban. Oh no. You didn't. <laughs> and of course it's Medivh instant because Eric with a K is a Medivh one trick. <laughs> Basically. Uh, so, um, alright, guess we're going on to game two now. <laughs> Uh, what? Well, that's a development. <laughs> either Soak isn't doing homework, or they feel like they have a plan. You can always purposely give picks like this over and say, we have a plan in place for this. So they're going to pick Johanna, and they're going to pick Tracer. Uh, Alright. Uh, so, Medivh is kind of considered a minor uh, Tracer counter, because he can counter the burst that Tracer tries to do. I was uh, gonna. Yeah. I, don't I was gonna commend them on the early Johanna pick because I, think, I do think she's really strong overall. She's got great wave clear. She can deal with the objective. Uh, and then the tracer. Tracer pick. Um, Diablo Lucio. That is a lot of mobility for anything to pick. They could pick a hammer and make hammer feel mobile between Medivh and Lucio. All right. But yeah. Soak Every Lane did say to me because we were waiting in the coin flip lobby, waiting for Spooky for a little while. They did say to expect spicier picks, and they did pick Tracer fairly quick. So I imagine this puts Spooky Ghost in a position where they have to ban the Tassar, right? I think so. A Tassar or a second healer. Or a which... mouth, yeah. Alright, so they ban out Greymane. That makes sense. You don't want the Greymane follow up on Diablo. You don't want the Greymane getting hyper carried with Medivh. You don't want the Greymane on Tracer. Yeah, this is going to be a hard game for Tracer because Tracer into a Diablo is rough. And then you have the Medivh to counter when you go for your kills. Yeah. I'm excited. And Medivh excited can also go Polly, right? which is just going to be instant death. He's going to go late line, right? They have to have the late line to combo does. down. From, from what I've seen, that's exactly what's going to happen. All right, Jaina banned out. Interesting. Didn't ban out anything we said. So now we just can get the hyper carry that is Tastar, the true carry of the Tracer Task combo, because Tastar is busted good. People really Until the awesome. rework? When, when's that coming? Even then, he'll be more busted good. I don't know what you're talking about. Force Wall is going to be a base ability. So do you call Orphea. Alright, so we saw the Orphea last match that we just casted. Um, pretty solid. Did fairly well on it. Interesting picks. They could still just pick offline Tassadar for their last pick here. Yeah, so we, we talked about things that uh, heroes that can disrupt the uh, the objective. Uh, capturing the objective, and I don't see that with the picks here. Orphea is pretty Stukov short range. Can. You can go sort of, across yeah. the wall and just channel on it. Um, Phoenix yeah. Kalefoss picked up here, so interesting. Interesting. So well, Phoenix will be the offlane most likely, and then you have Kalefoss. And again, you're looking at the Wombo, so the APOC, or Leyline, APOC, Phoenix combo is just if multiple people get uh, stuck in that. Apple. And Abathur. So they're going to go Abatracer. Abathur. Abathur. All right. So uh, with the Phoenix <sighs> combo, it is important to get Reverse Amp because you have to get the slow because APOC and Leyline both don't slow. Yeah. I you mean, they could always go self -slow. Lightning Breath as well. That's true. Um, so who is the clone target on the side of, Sp of Soak Every Lane, though? I mean, I guess two Tracers. It's not as good though. The extra attack speed just means you spend more time reloading. Anyways, uh, do you want to introduce Soak Every Lane? Okay, on the left side, Soak Every Lane, so Philip K on the Johanna, uh, Strogs on Stukov, Dubos on Orphea, is it Tornado or Tornado on Abathur, and Demon 13 on Tracer. I feel like it's Tornado. I think it's an H. Alright, and on That's Spooky Ghost, we have. Lucio being played by Little Wolf, Rogoff on Diablo, Boundrex on Phoenix, Colatus on Kelfos, and Eric with a K on his infamous Mediv. And Mega Muffin, I couldn't tell you. Could not tell you if Division B plays Locust Build, I guess, in the VOD that will not make sense on YouTube. I do not read the question. Nowadays, it might be a thing. It's a solid backdoor, but it doesn't come online until 16. 
and this is already yeah. Alterac, and I feel like it's just too long to late. Just go with a hat build. You have a tracer. You can take like Locus at one or Mines at one, and then go into hat build. But beyond that, I feel like you're still just going standard. Like you can flex the one pick, but it looks like he's just going to go standard, traditional tried and true, hat build. All right, and we're actually getting reactive Valispores on Stukov. Also hope for Johanna, ancestral strength for the Orphea, and pressurized glands for Abathur. It looks like Boundrex here is just going to go straight to the top lane. Showing he is the off laner, of course. Um, and a soul shield on Diablo will help with dealing with Orphea. And uh, mobile offense here coming out from Phoenix. See how he plays with that talent. Midi being annoying right off the bat. Go away, bird. He's a bird. The game needs more birds. All right, so wave fear. It's going to be sorry here. Interestingly enough, we still have four mid. Where we could go, so they're going to rotate two down. They're going to portal the Kalefoss around a little bit. It does shorten the map considerably because they're not only getting that distance, they're skipping the mud. So they're skipping over the slows. So they don't have to worry about that. Yeah, one of the things I've noticed playing into um, Spooky Ghost is that they use the Medivh for quick rotations on just about every map. One of the maps they're really good at is actually um, Tower, uh, Team of the Spider Queen. Just bad. But we have the mini objective of this map, which is the camps. And we already have Soak on their camp ahead of time using the Trace Stukov. And on the other side, we're going to have Lucio and Kalefoss. Not only were they okay. first to get there, but I feel like they're just going to do it quicker. So I think Soak's going to get a slight edge here, but we'll see how quickly that um, Spooky West can go. Which, taking the camp first isn't necessarily a good thing on this map, because then it pushes too far up the lane and it's much easier to clear. Nobody's soaking bot lane here for soak every lane. They may have missed a lane. I don't think they missed any actually, now that I look at the XP at the top. Abathur doing a good job of actually holding top lane against Phoenix and just getting all that XP as it comes out. So, and he has a couple yeah. mines set up. Yeah, I, I, I find it interesting that um, Phoenix in the top lane is actually just letting Abba push because Abba's still able to soak everything and maybe put some pressure on Abba. It could be because of the Medivh rotations that we talked about earlier. Could be scared of that speed. Here we have it right now, right? You have three members just stacking up here on the side looking to jump Johanna. Like, we're talking about potentially getting here at Johanna of all people because you have that speed. Their camp did get a little bit of push value, and Soaks did not. They barely got any health killed on that tower. First objection will be bot lane, and see, that's why Boundrex was playing safe, because of that rotation. He already had to back off. Well, both teams are essentially even neck, neck, neck and neck. Gank on the bottom, four, four members of Spooky Ghost down bot. They've been playing very tight in that four man so far in the mid mid bot rotation. You don't normally see rotations on this map. You play with like two solo lanes generally. We have... And here's the advantage of actually taking your uh, camp early because Soak Every Lane can already start their their camp again and they're going to get this pushing and they can go for the objective. Speakers also has it coming out now. Let's take a look at these tracer going a little bit. We are going to get parting gift there. It is the full like spell build hat. Not going to pick up the attack speed for Tracer, which makes sense, because then, again, more attack speed, more time reloading. Doesn't actually gain that whole lot of advantage anyways. And Abathur's going for Needle, needle Spine for the extra uh, stab damage. Is that the one you usually take? Uh, with Tracer, yes. Okay, so, yeah. Um, Extra attack speed on Tracer isn't good, because then she just spends more time reloading. Yeah, sure. Because you don't actually gain... Load speed, so you just go for the spell hat. Let's see, bullet time on Tracer. I like it, target excision. Some W talents coming out. Plasma Cutter. Sun King's Fury means we're going to have Living Bomb build coming out from KT here. That's intriguing. And Amethyr is still trying his best to soak. We'll eventually try to start edging out an XP advantage here, but it's hard when every team's still soaking every lane, anyways. Gravity Lapse hitting Tracer, but no follow up. And Medivh is Abathur so obviously weird. takes Mule. Ugh. 
That talent's still in the game. The only person who has that talent still. We need more mules in the game. Oh, There's a big what silence a on top of that portal. Beautiful though. silence. Yeah. Just gonna time out. Claudius is gonna be the only person who takes it. The rest of the team is hanging out. Medivh's still just a bird. So Apathur was all the way up in the lane, um, safe, soaking safely, still being able to help the team. Hat's on cooldown, hat's no longer on cooldown. So just the XP game. This could just be the classic Ultra X strat of soak till 10, then go for objectives by just everyone presses R, 10 R's at once, whoever wins gets the first objective. But so we go second step, they're gonna look a little bit here for the first one. Eric with the K is gonna work a little bit. There's another big silence coming out from Stukov, but again, this is a Lucio, so he's just gonna heal back up. They're good. Both teams are good at sustaining, right? So it is really gonna come down to like Abathur value. There's a big combo there onto Tracer, but the silence comes out as well. Do they have they are gonna be able to shield off I think the bomb landed in time to protect from the KT. It's either that or immediately afterwards. And he just had Yeah, I'm lost. actually really I'm really impressed with the way uh, Soak Everlane is just delaying this. They're not really going for uh, an objective themselves. They're just stalling it and letting their Abathur do the work. Um, they're still neck to neck, neck, neck and neck to um, with XP. So this is actually really good um, for Soak Everlane. Yeah. Um, but both teams going for camps again. I like Eric with a K just staying as a bird and giving portals just every everywhere. Not trying to hold it for some kind of big play or something. Just gonna go for it. Medivh is there now. He's trying to go for it, but he just he sees three and he just walks away. And then he's gonna become a bird and he's gonna probably fly back. Maybe he's gonna look over at his teams, putting up the portal. Say, go ahead, take the take the portal in. It's all right. Yeah, and there, there's the Abathur actually going in, being a, a bit brave and body soaking, or will he? No, that's not, not quite in range. Yeah, he's no, he's the, not quite in you range. You can't soak yet. from a bush. Nope. So that's just for beetles. Um, but tens yeah. are picked up now for both teams, so now they're gonna go in here on the side of Sweet Ghost. There's the Eternal Feast coming out, and Lucio is actually stuck inside of it. He's gonna get the Medivh Shield, but he's still gonna have to pop his ulti. Kael'thas is going to die to the Abathur clone on Tracer here, which was the one you called. Phoenix is gonna have to Tracer die Tracer lives. <laughs> yeah. Diablo trying to channel and stall a little bit. There's another Medivh Shield coming out. Phoenix is still kinda zoned out from the rest of the team. Little Wolf there on the Lucio is trying to survive. There goes the Tracer clone, so now they do not have the clone available. 1.1 seconds left on the objective, and first objective goes over to Silicon Relay in one quick swoop. They got 10, they pressed R, and they got the objective. Yeah, I'm actually really impressed with the way that they played that. Tra both Tracers did so well, um, pushing off the, uh, uh, the red team. But meanwhile, middle camp did get a lot of value for Spooky Ghost. So we'll have to see how that plans out here. There's a big silence onto Medivh. He barely gets out in time to give himself a shield. He's going to be able to portal out. Rogoth is going to walk away on the Diablo in time. I did not see Leyline go out, but it's almost back up. So they're going to have their combo available to them shortly. There's the ulti from Johanna, followed by, by the Stukov silence again. There's Eternal Feast coming out with one chop, but that's about it. Now there's a bunch of portal there. It's really just kind of a scary portal, right? Are they going to come through? You have to position as if they're going to come through, even if they're not. There goes all the bottom wall. Meanwhile, the middle one will get the gate and nothing else. Let's kill thoughts. We'll clean that up. Top will get the gate as well. We cleaned up by Phoenix. Back to the bottom lane. There's another sign from Stukov coming out. And now it's a 4v4 down here. As there comes the Leyline Sealed. Here comes the Apoch as well as the Kael'thas damage coming out the best they can. Now it's just kind of standing on top of each other. Medivh is getting low, but he's going to be able to shield himself in time. There's a Lucio. As well. Now they're gonna do double Stukov this time around. They're on the Abathur. There's a portal forward. They're trying to chase down the Orphea potentially. There's the Phoenix ulti in time. Will they get enough damage on anyone? They will not. As the Tracer or Stukov clone is still there, it will be followed now. And uh, both teams I love exiting. the Stukov clone. That was a fantastic Stukov clone to keep everyone alive and make sure that they all survive the, com the combo. And now they can actually get aggressive because uh, Spooky Ghosts are without a combo. For 49 more seconds, because you need the APOC. Yep. APOC and was just slightly uh... mistimed that it did not get the Johanna before she could pop on up. Yeah, there's the value of Mule. Everything is nice and healthy except for the one tower. <laughs> it's a great talent. I hate it. <laughs> 
I like it. That's because I'm usually the Abathur, so I usually get the mule value. Um, no. Alright, so now 13's picked up on the side of Soak Every Lane. The Abathur is in slowly inching out an XP lead here as they move forward. You now have the uh, Soul Mod Transference here on the side of Abathur. So he's now got a heal as well, which is kind of where that kind of starts to take off a little bit and snowball. There's a portal forward who will take it. Lucio's going to be the first one through, followed by Diablo. Johanna's there, but she's going to actually uh, unstoppable, and Diablo went back and forth on the portal. A lot of cooldowns coming back from both teams, and not really a whole lot of things sticking just yet, and they're going to back off. There's a lot of, like, colliding, and then just walking away and waiting for cooldowns again. Neither team yeah. really has quite the kill pressure or to punch through the defenses of the other team. But now we well, have one another objective. Things. One of the things that's happening now is that, uh, again, the Abathur is able to soak top and bottom, although the, the, the top he has to play a bit safer because um, Phoenix is still guarding it. And it took uh, Spooky Ghost quite a while to actually get down there to soak up whatever they had left. Charge forward on Diablo. Here comes the clone. It's going to be another Tracer clone. General Feast got a little bit of value there. There's the, the uh, Medivh Leyline, but there's no follow-up this time around. The Tracer clone is... About to go down here, 100 health left on it, and we'll interrupt the channel, but then he's going to go back. Lucio's trying to channel as well, or KT is trying to channel. We got 10 seconds left on the objective. Will they be able to solve time? They will not. There's uh, Silence Root Cabo from Stukov, but it's Johanna who's going to be the first to fall. Here's the portal, but they're going to actually turn away from the fight and just go for the camp instead. That's a pretty solid one. 32 seconds for Medivh right now as he continues to approach that. Diablos will really stack down his souls. Also worth noting here, 31 stacks currently as the silence is actually going to be the interrupt like we talked about earlier. There's a slight corner there that they might have been able to use. They're actually going to set up a portal in case he tries to do it again. Diablo can go forward, punish him and portal back out in time so he now has that on cooldown and they're free to channel it without any other interrupts until the silence comes back out again. Strogoss here really just going to wreck some hammock. There's the eternal feast so they really have to back off a little bit here. That ulti is now down for the fight. Tracer might have bomb available, I'm not quite sure. There's Orphea stall as well. The stall pressure coming up from Soaker Relaying is super major right now. As now, Johanna's res, and she's able to stall as well, and now that forces we to back off. And in the meantime, Bottom's actually uh, pushing hard into the um, Spooky Ghost Fort. Diablo's about half health here. The Little Wolf was able to get the channel there onto Lucio. Parting Gift goes out there from the Tracer, so that's a 30 second cooldown. He's able to tap here on Diablo and get portaled back in by his team. The objective is now going to be interrupted by minions. There he goes, the stun onto Medivh. Can he survive? He's going to get the ley line off as well as the shield, but it's Kael'thas who's getting pressured here by the Tracer. Kael'thas is going to fall down, and then it's going to be the Tracer, and then Orphea is going to fall to the Phoenix. Now it's Philip K here on the Johan who's in trouble. He's going to get the Abathur hat, but he's getting chased down by Medivh with Phoenix there, so they're going to secure the channel resume here on the side of Spooky Ghost. They also could have maybe go for a boss play, but they're down a member, so maybe just get the objective. Uh, will Phoenix go up and start it? No, he's just going to go back to lane. Try to catch up on XP here, try to get to that 16. This one uh, is kind of a major objective, because forts are going to start falling soon, and you're trying to hope that it falls in favor of your team. And to be ghost will have the objective, which gives them a nice advantage for that. Bottom lane is still getting hard pushed here by the Abathur. Let's see this uh, beetle go. Go beetle with its bonus 50% damage to buildings. It's distracted by minions though. If he puts a hat in bot lane, he can maybe finish that on the side of Abathur. But here comes the Eternal Feast in the top lane. Meanwhile, Diablo is stuck behind. Diablo will probably die here. Nope, there comes the Lucio ulti. Can he get out? Blessed Shield goes out, but Diablo's stuck in the mud, so he's going to fall. They're going to be able to pull KT out, but Little Wolf here is in terrible as Tracer tracks him down and kills him. Medivh is able to finish quest, and actually his AoE shield coming out as well, which is nice. He's able to shield up all three of his teammates that are up there. He's going to go back into bird form. Meanwhile, it is Phoenix who's in trouble. He will start to blink out, and Claudius here on the KT is sitting a little lower on health than he probably would prefer. Top wall will fall, meanwhile, to the objective. Bot objective is being defended by the ever through the best he can, or if he is sitting mid top lane and we're starting to level out here in the top lane. It's a 4v3. There comes the silence and blind. Just trying to step up a little bit. Yeah, Spooky did a great job securing the objective, but then I feel like they just brushed it and went too far without the objective. Just a little too early. Top fort falls. Spooky is going to rotate down to mid. You're going to use that portal to jump forward. 
So both teams about even. The bottom fourth is going to fall shortly, I'm sure, with like sneezing on it. Um, teams are probably going to start making their way towards either camp or a boss. Well, they start with camp. No one has an advantage for a boss, but you never know. Yeah. Sometimes you just, you just run shit. Sometimes yellow bosses work, though probably not when you're against Medivh who can leyline it. He actually is working to defend that bot lane now. No piece still, just a bird. He'll probably drop out and defend this, right? Picks up the globe, drop a Q, there we go. Get a little bit of damage from the Amethyr hat, but that's all right. He's just trying to protect the fort. We're handed over. Phoenix is here now, they'll work together. All right, meanwhile, in the middle of the map, both camps will collide here, and it's gonna be so every lane, it's gonna beat that camp into submission there and let their camp have the advantage as the next objective spawns. This objective has the potential to maybe end the game. Yeah, I think um, if Soak Every Lane plays it smart, they can stall it out till 20. It's still a fair ways away, but if they stall it, they will definitely have a huge uh, leg up on Spooky. There's the root combo onto Diablo, but it is Diablo, and he's pretty tough to kill. Like I said, they're, they're looking to fight, so Tracer's had it in mid lane. Um, Ava should be looking to Soak top lane. That's a huge opportunity missed. He needs the mule bot there it is. for Spooky. Alright, both teams kind of posturing up here. A little bit of chip damage onto the minion guardians of the camp of Spooky Ghost. Will they kill any? They're going to get drop one, two maybe? Two? Yep, alright. So they only have one left there. As the teams are posturing up to see uh, who wants to fight first. Diablo, of course, looking for a target to hit a wall slam. And uh, looks like Silk Every Lane might go for their camp here. This is Living Bomb to Joe, but you have a Stuka up there, so healing it up. Almost oh, supposed to trace it, but not quite. And his full Living Bomb build from KT. And Silk Every Lane is, again, pretty content. Just stalling it, just defending the objective. They're not looking to do here much. Comes well, Leyline. there we go. Leyline into APOC with the Diablo charge going on onto Stukov. There's the AoE Deep Shield helping them with that. Stukov will fall, followed by Orphea. It doesn't matter. Can who else can get out in time? Johanna is in a little bit of danger here, but will Little Wolf chase her down in time? They're going to try it. Not quite. Everyone else backed off. Tracer missing the Pulse Bomb as well. And now uh, Speedy Ghost looking like they're in a pretty solid position here. They are a little this... bit behind on the race of 20, though. This is why you ban their Medivh. This is why. Guarantee Medivh is banned next game. Nice four man AoE shield against the the objective minion. There goes Law of Hope. It was just pos po uh, popped by Johanna. Gonna step forward a little bit into Boundary X there, but not too far because uh, got a portal in waiting here for the side of Spooky Ghost already. Not that they know that. Uh, where's the mule? Mule should be out right now on this mid fort. Yeah, so, um, yeah, this objective shouldn't end. They should be able to uh, defend fairly easily, but it's probably going to open up one of the forts or one of the keeps. Which mid fort's you know, gonna fall. It's got 100 to health. All right, level 20 is picked up on the side of Soak Every Lane. You're going to have Get Stuffed for that burst damage. You're going to have Hive Mind for Double Hat. You're going to have the Spell Power here on Orphea. Uh, bio Explosion Switch, the buffed uh, Bio Detonation, Silence, and Radiating Faith there on Johanna. Yeah, let's Winter. become my favorite favorite talent on Johanna. It's just so much fun to uh, send everyone around you for two seconds. Two and a half, isn't it? Two, two seconds. Nope. Oh, all right. Anyways, middle fort fell, of course, and they also have keep wall half health on that. There's the explosion onto the Phoenix, but it doesn't really matter. He still has shielding. They also use the portal to go to top lane, so it's triple keep wall. Double keep wall plus a fort is what it looks like this objective will secure for Spooky Ghost. If they're... Well, Spooky's going to start looking for a combo again. Yeah. Um, Could also just rotate between top and bottom, like indefinitely pressuring the keeps always. That'd be fun too. Just constant oh, pressure yeah. on this. Fun. That's, yeah. 
and they're gonna start doing that just clear the waves as soon as they show up in top and bot right in front of the keep and say you either have to rush in and fight us or we're just gonna sit here and you're gonna constantly have to defend these two keeps over and over again until something happens All right, well, uh, many waves stepped up into top keep, so they're gonna step up and start taking the keep. There comes Phoenix. Phoenix, yeah, we have Phoenix and Phoenix in this game. There comes the clone on Tracer. They're gonna stun Phoenix solo there with the Johanna ulti, but it doesn't matter if you have the Leyline coming out as well as the shield. There's the APOC Leyline combo, but actually, Leyline was still going, so APOC didn't land on anyone. Here comes the Phoenix ulti, but it was interrupted. There's the Tracer Bomb on Diablo, he's going to be shielded off. And Eric with the K is getting a little bit low there on the Medivh, but Medivh is also not going to be able to save Diablo. KT is going to be the first two to fall. Portal out on Medivh there. Phoenix is trying to step forward, but instead gets Portal back and is going to get die. And now the mine there from uh, Amethyr is going to do a little bit more. Diablo's back, he ran out of souls. This is going to be top boss over to soak every lane. 20s, meanwhile, yeah. for uh, Spooky Ghosts include House Party, which is super good. Hellgate. Secondary Fire is interesting pickup. Uh, Flamethrower, of course, and Mediv Cheats, which actually threw off their combo last time. Yeah, I actually feel like they might go for a double boss play. It depends. Um, they lines up in see, Spooky could have started the objective, so. So every lane had to defend, but they're choosing to actually fight on the boss. In a 3v3. There goes the stun from Johanna, though, underneath the silence. Beautiful from silence. Stukov. The boss was secured by Soak by pressuring the Diablo off the point for a second there. He gets interrupted from going through the portal and will die for it from the double Abathur hat. Now that boss is going to push top lane. We'll get fort and probably keep wall, but I don't think it's, it secures a keep if you just ignore it. Little Wolf is going to defend it a little bit here as Soka Relane is going to step up and tr get the first channel going here. It does have to go for 50 seconds. Eric with a K getting super low, 115 health there on him. We'll get up in bird form and we'll be A-OK. -okay. I have to find something to click on. I can get rid of this. Right, there we go. All right. There is the double tracer. Popped a little early, honestly, it feels like. I don't think they needed a tracer clone. It is hiding a little bit, but still, it's already halfway through its time. Okay, 20 seconds to go on the objective, and there's no way that uh, Spooky are going to get it back. So they're. Uh, Soaky Relane's going to look to. No, okay, they're not going to look to take the camp. That'll be slightly too ambitious. Nah, they could probably do it. But it doesn't matter because you do have Leyline back up with APOC, and hopefully they have that picked out now. Show talents one more time here for the folks at home before we drop it since everyone is 20. 39 globes so far picked up for Mana Addict there, so he effectively has infinite mana. It's going to be awfully hard for him to run out in this situation. They're trying to bush party here. We're actually just going to watch Johanna for a little bit here. All right. Zoom back out there. We have all of our ultis up. We're there. Spooky ghosts are going to be looking for the ley line. There he goes. There's the Medivh Medivh Cheese. Cheese. There's the Phoenix. There's the Apoc. It will land this time onto one and onto the Stukov. There's a big pull back into the internal feast. But Tracer is going to be the first to fall here. Orphea is a little low as Medivh is going to pour himself out and in. And Diablo and Phoenix and everyone's just jumping all over the place. It doesn't really matter. As now it's Spooky Ghost going to back up to defend the objective. So here Lane is pressuring up a little bit. They still do have technically four, though they don't have the clone. Oh, they do have clone available. They could like double Joe or something into this if they needed to. Meanwhile, bottom objective will be killed off here. They're gonna run all the way up to the top lane to defend that objective. Meanwhile, Soak will use Johanna's health bar here to secure a keep tower. There it is. Threatening the portal on the team. They're gonna clean up all the lanes. And not a whole lot done with that objective for Soak. Well, I imagine you running into that Wombo again. It's like we've seen it before. <laughs> uh, sometimes it lands. When you know it, you have to delay it for an extra third of the time. Alright, so now, Spooky Yours here will go for Bot Boss. Which makes sense, because they're the ones with the Div. So they can secure it. 
See, and I don't know. This is where I sort of question the uh, hive mind on Abathur because the shield that you'd get on Tracer would have been nice in these team fights. Assuming that you clone Tracer. No, it's percentage though, and I don't think it's that much. But anyways, here comes Eternal Feast onto the point. Kalefoss is going to drop down already. It's followed by quickly by Medivh, and it's actually the combo coming out from Sokovia Lane. It's actually the one winning. Diablo is not going to be able to secure the objective in time. That is the Orphea down, though. Meanwhile, who tried to box the Phoenix. Now Diablo is going to have to jump forward, but he's going to be chased down by the Tracer. It's hard to run away from that, especially with an Abathur hat, and Diablo will fall. And that's game. Uh, it is. That is... GG going to come out most likely for Soak Every Lane. Diablo did have a soul reset, so he is back up by 30 seconds on the rest of his team. Fox is pushing forward. Meanwhile, top lane is close, not quite pushing through. Abathur's trying to use the hat to secure mid keep so that the armor drops on the boss even more. Pulse Ball Muse on the point. Diablo does have to go in on this, even though he's by himself without souls, basically. That is a huge wave coming in, including the siege camp here. And uh, that's uh, game one, going over Soak Every Lane. I guess the Medivh I was not lose. a believer. <laughs> We're in a believer? The, uh, the early Tracer pick. Um, I, I, I didn't see it coming. Yeah. Now they promised some, uh, some crazy off-meta things. They, uh, they brought us Tracer Abathur, which aren't... The most off meta. I was kind of hoping for Butcher when they said that. Or Nova. Yeah. Tornado and the Abbott did work. Uh, 30,000 XP soak. That's insane. 31k, yeah. Johanna and he suffered. had a ton of value in every fight. Um, he basically was pushing out everyone. Um, they were focusing a ton on him and Trace. the actual Tracer had a ton of play, a ton of room to work. Sure. sure. Yeah, actually, top the hero damage shards. I would not have guessed that based on watching that game. Uh, I guess some of that could have come from Eternal Feast on the last point, chomping away on like three people till they died. Siege damage, Abathur did 227k siege damage. It's just ridiculous. Alright, so that was game one of Soak Every Lane versus Spooky Ghost. Uh, if you're Spooky Ghost, are you going for map pick or are you going for first pick again? Hard to say. Um, I think spooky ghosts are very good at the few combos that they play, and they're really dangerous on on those combos. So I would say probably go for the first pick, which puts more pressure on uh, having to ban specific heroes out. Medivh, are do you hand over the Medivh in an effort to try to get like an Ariel or a Deathwing? No, I don't think... Yeah, with Eric, you just don't give him the Medivh. He basically beat it. started off any fights. Did uh, beat it. It was close, though. You can take, like, the Deathwing for the fear, though. To try to counter it. He's not, mm -hmm. hit, he's not hit by the counter the same... The combo the same way. Or you could just make your life easier and ban it. <laughs> and then Eric with the K goes URL. You have to deal with URL. Yeah, you're all garbage. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shh, shh. he's watching. Are, are we the team that's played your all the most? <laughs> be shh. our second most. Us it and Spooky, I think, have played it. Probably the top two teams have played it the most number of times. All right, but I. Uh... I agree, you're also really good and all that, but Medivh is just too much of a playmaker to, to let that through. Especially Eric being so comfortable in the hero. It, it looked really good. It didn't. It gave him a lot of macro pressure. Like They kept up with Abathur for a really long time due yeah. to the portal rotations for double soaking. And the next map is Towers of Doom. And it looks like... Yeah. It was first pick opted by Spooky Ghost again, trying to probably secure Medivh. So the map was picked out by Soak Every Lane. And as a solo laner, I despise this map at this point. Uh, Miserable. I don't play the game for PvE. 
Ah, it's fun though. I enjoy solo landing on this map. Very calming. Yeah. Yeah. Run up and down, up and down. Yeah. You can just kill minion, walk away, minion. If you get bored, you can poke the other solo laner a little bit and then go back to solo landing. Just kill minions. Mm -hmm. I sometimes like to play to Haka, and you can dig in for fights when you get bored and be like, hey, I'm gonna go lick some people, and then I'll be back. See you later. Uh, are you gonna join the, the lobby? I guess I should do it. You can just listen to me tell you what's going on and try to guess. That'd yeah, be funny. Much good. Uh, All right, so what are you picking for the soul laners here? Mafio. Obviously, Mafio is pretty good here. You're out. As we know, because Medivh is going to get banned. Uh, the Orc. Yeah, yeah, the Orc's pretty good. We've look. seen some Zol cheese. I have seen a game in uh, B East with uh, Zol playing the uh, offlaner role. Well, I like Zol on this map. He's not the fastest wave clear option, but because he spawns additional minions for the opposing Zol laner to clear. He still edges out value, and if he second in the rotation, he still edges out value at chip damage to towers. I don't know, I, uh, unless you're into mouth, who doesn't care? He's, you still like edge out chip damage though. Mm -hmm. Zul's fun. Also, maintaining Zul is not a thing anymore. It is. <laughs> they have a Medivh player. They can run a lot more options for main tank than they do. They will not have a, a guaranteed. They will not have a Medivh player. They have a Medivh player. Whether or not they <laughs> have Medivh bad. is a different question. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, that's that's fine. Everyone's here. Let's right, see if Sook is ready. Yeah. Sook is ready. Is Spookyos ready? Let's wait for their little custom Spooky Spookyos. There they are. So they are ready as well. Is that five of them? That's four. Who's not ready? Rogoth. Rogoth hasn't shown his spooky ghost yet. Oh, there it is. Tick tock, tick tock. Alright, so they are ready. So they are both ready. So we are ready. I'll tell them that. Sometimes teams like to wait for casters to say ready. Sometimes they don't. Alright, so the, there's the countdown, then we have the delay, and 3, 2, 1, and here's the trap. Towers Perfectly timed on my part. Alright, so, game 2, Silk Every Lane versus Spooky Ghost Division B West. Playing for their playoff positions, Spooky Ghost uh, has a chance to not make it to Necrofin, can steal away the 8th place. Depending on certain outcomes, Spooky Ghost really needs to secure at least one map win tonight. To really try to secure that playoff spot. Well, in that case, let's go for Spooky. Maybe they'll get the Medivh. Maybe it will work this time. All yeah, right. First so, game was actually pretty close, so it was back and forth. Uh, I'm looking forward to another good game here. Another good Abathur map too. Yeah. Speaking of Abathur and bands. Or TLV. First ban though by Spooky Ghost will be none other than Vala again, for some reason. Well again, Vala is strong um, as long as you have a good player uh, on her and you have the uh, second support. There's the midi ban. Mm -hmm. Thank you. <laughs> Should have given it over. Alright, so Medivh's ban, which means Eric with a K will most likely become the offlaner now for Spooky Ghost. This next ban could be Malfail, could be Leo, could be Cho'Gal. That'd be fun. I want a Cho'Gal game. Show me Cho'Gal. All right, there's the Deathwing ban. We don't care about that anymore. We're cheering for Cho'Gal. 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 Well, so it's okay. Verlaine could ban out the Oriole. She's still pretty strong despite her slight nerf. Uh, what else would they go ban into, uh, into Soka or into Spooky Ghost? Gul'dan. Called it. Ariel's still available. Let's see if Ariel's first pick for Spookyus. Now they're confused. They weren't expecting the Ariel to get through. 
so both teams kind of focusing on batting each other out. Um, Ariel's a good pick. There's still the um, strong solo laners, Malthiel, although you'd probably want to hold off to that. I guess start with the tank. Or the Ariel. And it's the Ariel. And it's the best skin, too. It's all right. So props to Lil Wolf. It's okay. Mega Muffin in chat also chancing for Chogol now. <laughs> I would love to see the Chogol. It's a decent Chogol, man. Played, oh, not played into us. Alright. Alright, so <laughs> Johanna Mafeo plays up some Mafeo for the offlane. Very good double soaker. Uh, Johanna also really good wave clear. So. Yes. Uh, the early. So um... This is chart playing. The early mouth heel, um, it's a confident pick, and it does mean that uh, SCL might focus on pushing hard bot, which will be hard into a Savannah's variant. Uh, variant most likely not the offlaner, one because it's picked on Rogoth right now, which is their tank player, and two because he doesn't double so well. No, that would be a hard, um. That'll be a hard fight. It, it you never know. They might go for some shenanigans, but uh, I do think that's going to be a taunt variant. Uh, Ming banned out, which makes sense if you know anything about taunt variants and have seen Dread Pirates play. You know that or build Ming plus taunt variant is pretty deadly. Let's see. This ban is probably a healer ban. So, Ana. Ban the Ana. I mean... Would make sense, but Stukov actually did a ton of work last game. Yeah. Those sounds were fantastic. Alright, so this is probably going to be a healer pickup plus a DPS. Where they can, well, they can DPS. actually hold off. Junkrat, Anduin. They have the Anduin Johanna combo on the side of Soki Relane. They want to go for Falling Sword. Which, funny enough, is totally a uh, combo that I've seen from Spooky. How does that work with Rocket Ride? Can you Rocket Ride the Light Bomb in to guarantee the damage from your passive? What's a Rocket Ride? That's not a thing. Yeah, it is. That'd be hilarious. I don't know if that lasts too long, though. Because Rocket Ride goes up in the air decently long. Joey mm -hmm. now picked up with Blaze. I really like this draft out of Spooky Ghost. It's a very solid, very standard draft. Swapping out your more traditional like ETCs out for uh, Taunt instead. Yeah, so Blaze will have a bit of a hard time keeping up with a uh, double soaking Malfeo, but just you just stick somebody like a Sylvanas uh, in the middle lane every now and then. Yeah. Go have Jaina drop a blizzard and walk away. Um, early picking Malfeo isn't too bad on this map, especially if you're going to go into like a Junkrat later who can hard push the bot lane on his own. And there's Kael'thas. So, Soak Every Lane, though, has four really good wave clear characters and an Anduin. So that's a solid draft strategy on Towers. Spooky Ghost has to get four, and then they're decently too. They have Blaze for wave clear, Savannah's for wave clear, Jaina. So they're they're short one extra wave clear hero. So it's four uh, wave clear versus three. As we're about to get into game two of Soak Every Lane versus Spooky Ghost, fighting for the playoffs slots in Division B West. All right, and for Soak Every Lane, we have Philip on the Johanna, Strogs on the Kalthas, Dubles on Anduin, Tornado on Malthio, and Demon 13 on the Junkrat. On the side of Spooky Ghost, we have Claudius on Savannah's, Boundrex on Blaze, Little Wolf playing Ariel, Rogoth on Varian, and Eric with a K playing Jaina. And this time, we have Portrait Synergy coming up from Spooky Ghost. They all have the Coon. All right, so... I'm going to admit, I actually like Spooky Ghost Draft a little bit better. They have actually a very scary engage. And if they have the uh, Taunt and um, Blaze stun follow-up, that's almost surely somebody did, unless um, Leap, uh, Leap of Faith is up. I am going to say it's Adrenaline Stun Pack on Blaze. <laughs> And you're I right, can't Mega remember Muffin. the last time I picked it. Mega Muffin pointing out we did not get Chogol this draft. Tricky Shuffles coming out from Junkrat, so he's going into auto attack. So it's 
more sustained Five, damage, but four, he's going to give up three, some of that trap two, build damage that you one. sometimes get out. Q build coming up from Savannah's for the burst here. onto single target to help follow up on the twin blade, or twin blade, the twin blade taunt. He gets all of his abilities now. That'd be fun. That'd be a fun buff. Just combining twin blades with taunt. <laughs> So that's an interesting setup. There, the early rotation top for Varian and Blaze actually being the tank early on. Makes sense. I like it. Varian's just a minion anyway, so four. So why make your four man, which is majority of your team, weaker when you can just make your one man weaker? You can hold. A yeah, it's a good adaptation. They have decent wave clear too in the four man. And right now, both four mans are just double soaking, so they don't really need Rogoth to uh, double soak all that much just yet. Here for the K, gonna get booped away by the Junkrat mine a little bit here, as I wasn't sure which way they're going. There's the Sun to Mothiel to separate him from the Jaina, but the live Gravity Laps coming up from KT, and they're gonna spread a little bit of the Living Bomb around, but it's alright, they have an Ariel. They'll heal that back up eventually. Oh, yes. Love for everyone. Philip K, there they are. Varian, hidden minions. The, one. the amazing legendary wave clear Varian. Oh, uh, yes. Eric with the K wants to get his camp, but he understands he's about to be invaded as uh, Soak Every Lane already got their camp, so they're going to just walk over and take it. Anduin's not even going to bother to unmount for this. Alright, there he goes. He's going to go ahead and unmount now. So, uh, so we could just a little bit split up right now. They're not really sure if they're going in on this or not. We're stepping up into it, but it is a 5v4 right now, and the gravity laps there onto Jaina is going to secure her as the mind from uh, Junkrat going to separate the Ariel so she's unable to save her with any heals. Yeah, I actually think that Spooky could have easily gone in and contested that, but they just weren't sure, didn't commit, and it ended up costing them Jaina. And a lot of bot wall. We do have taunt now, so I imagine that he will rotate down. We also have possession on the side of Savannah, so they're going to flip some of those minions around. There's the CC on to Savannah, is going to secure her before she has a chance to run away. Kael'thas is out of mana as well. First objective in 30 seconds, Blaze is no top lane. He's going to stun out the Mothiel and go on him a little bit. He has stepped behind him. 40 armor is up as he pops his passive and just focuses on wave play a little bit. Yeah, and Demon on the Junkrat is actually doing really well in securing some of these skills early on. Did you say he's being a demon? Nope. Nope, I don't do puns. I do. Alright, first objective, it looks like we have Spooky Ghost in a three-man commit to their side on the top. No one's committing to top left at the moment, and bottom middle is being picked up by Soak Every Lane. Now Spooky Ghost is going to run over to try to steal this. They could have probably taken it earlier, as Tornado was too busy taking him top camp. And it's actually going to be two objectives going to Spooky Ghost as they secure both top ones. But meanwhile, they're losing their bottom fort here. Yeah, I don't mind this at all. This commitment to bottom fort uh, instead of the the objective isn't terrible. Um, especially with the wave now, you should be able to secure it. And it's it gives you far more if you then just choose to defend it. Um, as we all know, bottom lane wins this map. Ariel has not picked her four yet, and she is at level six. It is Sun Fury Enchantment coming out from uh, AT. Just that last time too. Uh, he, I guess he can get fifteen percent spell power. That's not too bad, I guess. But it, it is conditional spell power, and I just don't. Get... All right, both teams at seven. Nobody's looking to fight just yet. Just rotating for the wave clear. Looking for the tens, I guess. They have taunt variant now. I feel like they can start being a little bit more aggressive, looking for pickoffs when they can. Again, they get separated. Spooky's not doing as well this game uh, without the Medivh portal of rotating as a solid, strong man wall. As so every lane is now just going to invade the camp again. Okay, they do. They're going to go ahead and clear it out. And Mothiel is down here already, so it's another five v four if they were to engage into the. Now Mothiel will rotate out and probably grab mid so he can come back down for this objective. So is using your passive try to secure this. Gravity laps onto Jaina will be saved by the Ariel. He's now going to heal all that back up. 
Now the minions will push in and destroy that bottom fort just in time for Silk Every Lane if they want to go back and pick up this altar here. They're trying to body block out the Twin Blade variant, just the Taunt variant, but it's Doables there who's going to start being pressured by the Jaina, but it's actually going to be Jaina who's going to be Gravelaps and picked off there by KT. Little Wolf a little low there, needs to be careful, is going to just die to the KT. Q in time, and here comes Junkrat stepping up onto the Twin Blade. He's going to be Gravity Laps, but they're already out of cooldown, so he's just going to back. And now 10s are picked up in favor of Silk Every Lane. Still, who have not channeled bottom objective yet? Yeah, they have all the time in the world right now. Mothio didn't even bother coming down out of this place. They're just soaking, doing the uh, solo laner stuff on this map. So, very fun. And so Kelly Lane is just defending bottom, which is uh, the smart thing to do. You hold this bottom um, bottom tower, and you have access to all the uh, objectives coming up. Man, these teams are just going to sit down here now for, like, as a four-man. It's actually Jaina in the top lane now, so King Varian's going into mid lane. His blaze is dead. Talk about that. He got killed by last raids. <laughs> Didn't even notice, honestly. Uh, but now we're going to see tens picked up here on the side of Spooky Ghost. They all right. So obviously protect onto Varian, which isn't really an ulti. All right, we're gonna have Bunker Wailing Water Ellie coming out from Jaina. I feel like they could have just gone for a wombo combo. CC into CC into Ring of Frost with Wailing. Ariel. Don't, don't tease us, Ariel. We know you're going to go res. There we go. <laughs> Thank <is>. you. <laughs> right. The chasing trap going to chase around a little bit. Just pull it into the death zone, let it hit a minion. Or they'll just break because Junkrat decides to put a new one down. Yeah. So, I actually, I, I'm not necessarily big on the light bomb in this comp. Because I don't really see anyone diving in. Um, with the Blessed Shield picked up on Johanna, um, it's going to be a slightly awkward, maybe defensive light bomb. Yeah. Holy Word Salvation could have been interrupted by Blaze Stun, Wailing Arrow, Variant Taunt. As uh, Mafael will go to interrupt the Blaze, who's going to now be chunked down to half health there. Silence going out on to two members at least. There comes the Rip Tire. He's going to hit four members of Spooky Ghost. There's the Light Bomb being ran in by Johanna. He's going to land onto two. Ariel's getting super low here. Will probably be the next at all. Last Rite's going out onto Varian, but not quite enough. Meanwhile, Blaze is in the back doing a Bunker Dance. Philip with a K there on Johanna's getting super low. They're not quite able to catch the rapid movement speed there coming out from the blaze the adrenaline buttons step. pressed nobody dies nobody dies but double alter for soak every lane as they continue to pressure in on this map it is now 15 to 32 in their favor junkrat gonna jump forward there i think it was junkrat who leaped. maybe kt just walked up and i wasn't paying attention uh second wind all right and yeah, Mouthfield is off to do this thing and took every lane defending bottom with with the four. Five. Now, all five down there. Yeah, one of the things that you have to be careful with Junkrat is that he can get you out of what you assume is a safe zone. Um, and if you're not afraid to actually hop into the uh, cannon zone, you can still get picked just like anywhere else. Might have seen it once or twice. Stitches. Just. Could have picked stitches. Could have had Chogol. Could have played Chogol. All right, looks like Savannah is in the top line here. Going to look for a sneaky gank here onto Tornado. Now Drex is slowly pulling Tornado backwards. He doesn't know, but now he's in trouble. Here comes the bunker coming out there from the blaze. He wanted to do a bunker dance, but just couldn't. And uh, now Tornado's just going to walk away. Meanwhile, on the bot lane, nothing's going on. Except for this camp is going to be taken as soon as it spawns by Soka Relay. Junkrat's just so dirty on this map. Alright, so for Spooky Ghost to actually get back into this game, they're going to have to start getting aggressive. It's going to be hard into the uh, into the Junkrat and to the Johanna, but you're going to have to start getting some picks, whether it is on the uh, Anduin or the Junkrat, whoever, you have to start getting an engage. 
It actually yeah. probably start with the Mothia during the laning phase in between objectives so they don't get a super far ahead. Here comes the taunt onto Johanna though, but she's going to be pulled back. There is the Water Elemental going out as well. They're going to start attacking KT, but it's going to go down to the Sapper camp. Four seconds left on time, but Mothia is just going to chill the objective. Blazes is not quite in time to interrupt that. The Root's going to actually catch Jaina, the gravity left is going to catch Ariel, the light bomb going to hit them both here, and Varian as well. It's actually going to be the Riptire coming out as well as it's Phoenix, and they're going to go up 2-0 to zero kills currently. Blaze is trying to get away, he's going to actually dodge the last rights by going into Bunker, but then he pops out before it times off, and so he'll come back out, eat the damage, and then die. So is going to jump away from the enemy team using her... Yeah, I think there was some miscommunication here because Sylvanas was back during the uh, the camp and the rest of the team was sort of slowly Very walking insane. away from, from Soak River Landing. So it's a bit unfortunate on the on the Spooky Ghost side, but uh, this game is starting to really spiral out uh, under control. It is. A uh, Soak River Lane decides to stop defending bot lane and instead go pick up more forts because why not? Here comes the root onto Jaina. Will it be enough water? And Monty is out. There comes the light well from Anduin. The bombs are spreading in the back line of Spooky Ghost, but Johanna will fall. Eric with the case, though, running forward here. He's at half health. He's going to actually get popped by Kale Foss. But here comes the resurrect from Ariel. And then Eric with the K runs forward again. Will they spread the bomb? No. Eric says, I prefer resing with half health. Alright, so now, Spookyos can make plays here, right? They can try for triple alter. At least, they definitely need at least two. They lose two, they lose the game. Alright, they take that back, which is good. They're going to lose top wall. That's fine. Top wall doesn't matter. Only one thing that matters is the number of actual buildings. Blazes in the bot lane. Little Wolf is going to start the channel here on Ariel. They're going to try to interrupt him with the E on Mafia. Well, this isn't going to be enough, but they are going to burst him down with the taunt. There's going to be a lift up onto Savannah. She's going to be A OK. -okay. Did she try dodging the living bomb? And Johanna is going to get the channel off because Varian's going to miss the Q. There's going to be the charge forward onto the Kale Foss, but is it going to be enough? Instead, it's going to be two picked off there in the back line. There's the Light Bomb. They're slowly working down on the Varian. There's the Protect. Can he get in a bunker? He will get in the bunker. Light Bomb was thrown out aggressively for some reason. Meanwhile, the Water Elemental is still hitting KT there in the back. Varian is taking quite a bit of damage. He's trying to be protected. Blaze and KT trying to peel for each other. They're going to move forward. Junkrat's ahead of them right now. They're going to knock Blaze backwards towards the team. Varian is down to 700 health but he's gonna slowly heal back up with the passive HPS that he has and both the teams yeah. are gonna get out for Spooky Ghost meanwhile so Kevin Lane's gonna run back towards the and get the boss for boss. those who can count boss ends the game it does Ariel should needs to self res up oh, can't now and to self res and get ready to whip they don't even realize it they have the mine down from Junkrat now on the boss it's actually not quite on the circle completely off a little bit that's game GG as Soak Every Lane will take 2 0 domination and Spooky Ghost. Well, that game, um, obviously, Soak Every Lane again came up with a plan. They played it well. They, uh, they took control right from the start and they did not let go. They didn't ease up. Control the map. They did the the invades. They were aggressive. They got their picks. They played it well. They did. They did indeed. Um. All right. So we we will now to an NGS Discord lobby for an interview with a member of Soak Every Lane. Uh, love you too. Hello. Hello. How are you feeling? Hey. Feeling really good about that. How are you feeling, Torge? About how are you feeling, Torge? Oh my gosh, I was so happy I finally got to play Malthale after one tricking him for like years, and I never got to play him in NPS. It was <laughs> so great. Ah, uh, that's good to know. You know, I hate Malthion Towers because all you do is run top. 
You're just yeah, but like one. sometimes just... you get like a beautiful last rights one v one, and it just feels so. Yeah, and then the cast will miss it completely. <laughs> the curse of the offline. We've Crazy. All We've all been there. Crazy set of game. All right, so game one, we went to All Track Pass, uh, which was your map pick. Uh, did you pick the map because you had a specific strategy in mind, or just because you're comfortable on it, or because you thought they weren't comfortable on it? What was your thought process there? Uh, I think we just picked it because we were comfortable on it. Well, we yeah, had a little bit of that. strategy, right? We, we did have a little bit of a strategy. I wanted to play Illidan, but my team shot me down. Ah. Uh, yeah, uh, and there was say. that that uh, that tracer pick, early tracer pick, which kind of took me back. So my question is, what were you smoking something, letting the uh, the Medivh through? Uh, didn't think it would be that big of a threat. Yeah, yeah I'm not and sure if we. <laughs> I don't know if we scouted it enough, I guess, to know uh, that we should abandon the first. No, we definitely saw they played Medivh, but I never, I like, I guess, I never really looked that deep into it. We learned in game two, though. <laughs> you sure did. As do most people when they let it through. Um, <laughs> see, that game was pretty back and forth. Was there any point at which you started to get nervous that maybe you were going to lose it? Um. The point I got nervous was that one big team fight after we had won a wave, like a huge wave of cavalry, and they blew up. It seemed like they blew up a lot of us, but apparently they only blew up Tracer. Yeah, that was actually. Yep. I think they may have also killed Clone, which is probably why it felt like that without actually losing. Probably. Them. Yeah, yeah I, I think Tracer actually went down first, and then uh, Abba cloned Orphea, I want to say. I'm not sure. Yeah, I had some really weird clones that game because the ones on Tracer kept getting interrupted when she recalled, and so I accidentally cloned Stukov one fight, which yeah. was actually worked which out is... well because I got to save somebody. Yeah, that was awesome. I, I I noticed that one, and you actually saved the entire team. Everybody walked away, and we're going, what? How? <laughs> so, yeah, I agree. So out of curiosity, because a lot of times when there's like a stacking mechanism on a hero and you clone them as Avatar, you guys have shared stacks. Does Ab if you're Abathur or and you clone Stukov and he has a Q out there, can you activate and detonate his Q or W? Um, I don't think so because D only popped up when I threw a Q out, or maybe he didn't have a Q. But it's, I don't clone Stukov often enough to know the answer to that question. <laughs> <laughs> he's not the carry. He's, he's not the hyper carry. Not I the... did get in there and like do some slaps though. I mean, the, the, like that's the the thickest Abathur slap you can do. I think is a Stukov clone. Yeah, 500 damage Abathur slap. With the increased attack speed as well. <laughs> right? Yeah. Yeah, new new meta. Hyper carry Stukov. <laughs> <laughs> There's hyper carry Lucio. I mean, it's wonderful. I was I was actually, I was really excited to be able to run Illidan with Philip, but Philips are in this uh, lineup our only competent tank. Well, you just sacrifice yeah. the competent tank to have a a better DPS option. Uh, you don't you, you, better is a strong word. So here's the thing. You don't need a tank when you run five bruisers. Uh -huh. true. Or just five DPS. All right, so then... I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let you... Okay. <laughs> <laughs> moving oh. on to... Moving on now, I think. <laughs> All right, so uh, <laughs> you guys chose... Or they chose first pick against... You got map picks. So you guys chose Towers of Doom. And then you guys went there, and <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> I'm trying. To, I was trying. I'm trying to work my way through order of the game, so I have to rewind mentally back to the beginning of that game. Well, we played another 13-minute Towers of Doom, right? Yes. Thank you. That that map is actually supposed to go longer, is it not? Yeah. <laughs> nah, I don't think so. No. So. Obviously, learned from game one. Uh, the Medivh did not make its way through this time around. Medivh initially uh, enabled their rotations, and um, you, with the Junkrat pick, that was uh, that was a big deal in the, at the start because Junkrat was getting all the uh, the separation of the team and getting the picks. Um, so, is that something you play a lot? Focus on the junk. 
Yeah. I mean, he's really good at the map as well. Yeah, so. he's pretty good, and our Junkrat player is pretty good too. Yeah, DMN's kind of been looking to like play a little bit more Junkrat too, so it's always nice to like find ways to fit it in. Well, the answer is every map in every draft. That's how you fit it. <laughs> Junkrat's never really bad, is he? Yeah, he's, Except he's... maybe on Battlefield Returny. Even then, the the uh, movement in the middle of the map is pretty choke centric, so you can start throwing down traps and block that off. You have another solid racer, or just yeah. run the defense comp. Hey, that's a point there. So, on the sec second map, they actually adjusted well for what they had for their comp because their comp was actually scary, uh, and it should have taken off at four, and they adjusted with putting the very in top. Um, but with the aggression, you um, you were the aggressive team instead of them. Is that how you were going into it, or were you thinking of staying back initially and, you know, getting advantage with macro? Because uh, I was thinking that's going to be a rough game for you for a little bit. No, we definitely realized that they were going to be very strong at four, but we also knew they were going to be four, so we just really tried to push our push and be aggressive get them on the back foot before they got their power spike win before they oh. can <laughs> yeah exactly yeah well, yeah, well you, you got the bottom and you actually held on to it which is yeah that was that was perfect you held on to bottom and didn't let them come uh, get it back forever yeah that the foreman was so good about kind of keeping the lane clear and staying on top of camps and then we just we just tried to time uh having the having Malthael kind of like at mid whenever they wanted to invade the camp because i think we invaded the camp every time it was up and got it um so a little bit of of coordinated macro um yeah lane. don't tell yourself short tours you were calling out when people were top all the time it was great yeah. Well, you escaped a couple of gank, gank attempts, the uh, Sylvanas and, and Blaze, and you just like, all right, I'll just walk away now. And yeah, that's... For five-man, five-before ganks, uh, don't bot, so... Yeah, it, it was... Yeah, escaping those ganks is always kind of the the pride of, of running Mouth Ale in the offlane. It, just not dying, right? Like, being able to get away as they commit resources to you and letting the foreman take both camps, take the bottom, hold it forever. Um, yeah, I, I think... My mouth ale is just, it's very frustrating to play against. Yeah, and I, I feel like um, having Sylvanas go top is, is a huge re resource committed top instead of pushing down whatever fort um, with, with the rest of the team. Right. So I have a question for Philip as you're the offlaner now. Are you working on the Samuro, Gazlo, and, and TLV? No. No. <laughs> All no. Right. All right. All right. The you sure? real question, though, are you working <laughs> I, I'm on quite positive on that? <laughs> are you working on offlane Morales? Hmm. I'm gonna have to go for no on that too. I do have some spicy offlane heroes. I have been practicing, but I was the tank player this match, so you didn't get to see them. Is it offlane Gaul? Yes. Yeah. All right. So, so with these two wins tonight, which again, congratulations, you guys have moved up. You're actually taught. No, you're yeah. up ahead of Devil Kegs now. Yep. Are you not? Yeah. They top four, if I'm not mistaken. Yep. So you congratulations. Will be fourth seed, guaranteed. Yeah, that means that you'll be going into who knows gaming or Devil Kegs. Who do you want to go into? Let's see. I think I remember Devil Kegs was the first match we played this season. Hmm. And. Apparently, they've gotten better since then, so I'm hoping to get a rematch with this right in playoffs. They've had a few roster swaps, I believe. So, um, yeah, it will be an interesting match. They used to be very aggressive right off the start of the season. They would just run teams down. Um, yeah, it will be interesting. Yeah. I think that was the team that beat us last year in the playoffs in the first round too so it'll be nice to get another shot in the playoffs rematch well hopefully we'll meet in the playoffs too are you yeah so it just looks like you're the fourth team 
because we're apparently Division B West decided to lock in our uh, rankings from top down. So you guaranteed fourth slot now. Oh so frick! I said the apparently double keg. Sorry, I want to interrupt. Apparently double kegs beat us in the first round, so I guess we're gonna beat them in the playoffs now. Yeah, they two owed you guys, and you guys went <laughs> two and one against Who Knows Gaming, and Who Knows Gaming won. Yeah, I think both the teams are good. Uh, both teams play slightly different. Um, Devil Kegs focus more on the, you know, on the, on the team fights and running it down. Where who knows, gaming has a pretty strong macro game. Um, so both teams are strong, and they're all, both the games that we've played were pretty fun. Actually, I think Roll One is secured in seventh too. So we actually Division B West has one, two, three, four, and seven locked in. Hmm. Cool. Who knows gaming can. Actually, can Who Knows Gaming even take it from. What, what did Devil Kegs versus Who Knows Gaming? What was the result of it? 2 1 Double Kegs. So actually, no. Uh, we are locked now 1 through 7. Oh, wow. Because it is You Are Not Alone, Phoenix Rising Onyx, Lurk Patrol, Soak Every Lane, Devil Kegs. Even if Who Knows Gaming gets a domination in their next game, they can't pass Devil Kegs because. They'd be tied for points, and Double Kegs wins the tiebreaker, and then roll oh. one. So the only thing left to decide is Spooky Ghost versus Necrofin. All right. Which well, I'm definitely looking forward to facing Double Kegs in the first round of the playoffs. Or... <laughs> yeah. All right. So, All right. Please who? Because Fiend Confidence, who knows gaming, Spooky Ghost, and Necrofin is left. So it is. I think we can figure this out in a bit later. It's getting late, and I really actually need to go to bed now. That's fair. Same. It is. Gotta get, I gotta get up early in the morning. So. Do you have any shoutouts you want to do? Uh, yeah. Shoutouts to my team. Shoutouts to the kid who couldn't be here tonight. I had to play tank for you, and it went great. Um. Yeah, I was so stoked to get back to actually be able to play because I haven't been playing it all this season. Um. It's been so fun watching everyone from the outside, uh, like and watching all the games and like watching everyone get better and fill up your like your shot calling and everything has gotten so much better. And I'm like super, super excited about it. Um, and I'm just yeah, I'm just really stoked that y'all are all still playing together. And I got to sub in for a game or two this season. Yeah, great playing with you, too. Cool. Well, congratulations <sighs> and good luck in the playoffs. Thank you. Thanks, so. y'all. Have a good night. Have a good night. What about, do you have any shout you want to do? Well, um, I don't think Lily's watching, but hi, Lily. <laughs> All right. Uh, thank you to both teams for coming out and letting us cast. Thank you to NGS for putting it all together. And we'll see you guys next time in the Nexus.